from the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line on this Thursday. I'm Nick Barris. All right, sit back, relax. It's already like 83, 84 degrees out today. It's going to be over 100 with the heat index. Hey, just relax and enjoy the program today. And, and imagine, if you will, for a moment, what if you could just escape today while you're dealing with all of the sweltering heat into outer space, someplace cool, discovering new images and stars and all of this. All right, you know, we all can't just jump on a rocket ship and go do this. But if you've seen the news lately, uh, the James Webb Space Telescope is, is the latest up there, and it's sending back some incredible images compared to some of what we saw with the Hubble. I mean, it's just uh, the advances that come into play. We've seen so much, so interesting. I've been following some of them, and, and what this means to discovery about our universe and where we go with all of this, we thought we would do a program on that this morning. Share a lot of those great images with you. We can take some phone calls if you'd like about what we're seeing, where we go, what it's all about, and, uh, and just talk about it, give you background about these telescopes. Um, well, who better to do that than the director of the Dyer Observatory? We're lucky we have someone who's this qualified locally to join us to talk about it. And also, I understand, share a lot of the images with us. Billy Teets is with us this morning. Billy, good morning to you, and thanks for coming on. Good morning. Thank you for having me. You know, for someone like you and your staff and the students and all this, this has to be very exciting. Oh, yes. We've been awaiting these images for a while. We've been following the, the development of the Webb Telescope for, you know, for years now. And so when it finally lifted off last December, you know, we were ecstatic. We couldn't wait to start seeing some of those images coming back. And now that they are finally starting to, to come back, um, you know, it's been a great topic of conversation and we're looking forward to seeing what else the web is going to be able to show us in the coming years. All right, listen, we're going to show images and we want to get into some of the basics of all this and, and the history of it. But first, talk about, okay, you say the images coming back and, you know, how far away from Earth is Webb and how long does it take for some of these images and feel free as we go to show some of the images as you're talking for them to make their way back from Webb to us here on planet Earth. Okay, uh, so the Webb telescope is in, um, it's in a halo orbit around a point called the Lagrange 2 point or typically it's referred to as L2. That is about a million miles away from the Earth. Compare that to uh, the Hubble Space Telescope, which I would bet that everybody has heard of and seen many images of. Hubble is in a low Earth orbit, so it's only about 350 miles above the surface of our planet. But Webb is actually much farther out because of the type of telescope that it is. Um, so Webb is an infrared telescope. And when we think of infrared, the, the best way to describe that is heat. So when you go outside and you feel uh, the, the warmth of the sun, you're actually feeling infrared light, which is just a type of light that your eyes can't see, but you can actually feel. And there are many different types of light uh, that astronomers use to study the universe. And so uh, the web has to be far away from a heat source like the Earth and even the moon in order to be able to detect some of the, the objects that it's going to be looking at. For example, some of those incredibly faint galaxies that were seen in that very first publicly uh, released image. So um, it, it, it's uh, about a million miles out and it is at, when it's at that point, um, it's able to stay with the Earth. The, the combined gravity of the Earth and the Sun work together to keep Webb moving with the Earth. So even though it's a million miles away, uh, it takes just a couple of seconds for uh, the the signal from Webb, or you know, when we're downloading the images for the, the signal to get from Webb to the Earth. Then there's uh, a whole process where uh, the data, the raw data goes through um, what's, what's known as the software pipeline where um, the, the data are calibrated um, and uh, you know, certain things are done to them to make them uh, usable for science. Some of the images are combined where you get these really beautiful color images. So um, some of the, the data that, you know, that's already been released was taken just recently, but in, in the coming years, as uh, astronomers around the world get time on the telescope, they'll have a certain period of time 
where only they have access to the data so that they can do their scientific work, they can make their discoveries, they can publish their papers. And then uh, after a certain period of time, usually around a year, um, the, the data become publicly available, just like with the Hubble Space Telescope. So anybody at home would then be able to go download those raw images and you know combine them for their for their um, uh, own pleasure to try to see what kind of images they can make or um, other astronomers will get access to, to that data to be able to do their own work on it awesome all right so let, let me get a sense from you now that you have Webb so much farther out than as you explained the hubble is what is it um, when it was launched and how many years ago was it launched what is it that we hope to learn different from Webb, what's it going to open up for our scientists on this planet with this new access so much farther out? So uh, the Webb was launched on Christmas Day of last year. Okay. Uh, it- 6.20 local time uh, here in Tennessee. I actually got up and, and watched it live. Uh, it was launched from uh, French Guiana. Um, so it's, you know, it's only been in space for about seven months now. But uh, Webb is, is different from Hubble in that um, Webb is an infrared telescope. So the Hubble Space Telescope can also observe a little bit into the infrared, but Webb is, is a, a bigger telescope uh, it's more sensitive in the infrared. It can actually look farther into the infrared than what the Hubble can look. So f- an, an analogy would be, um, you know, infrared light is not visible to our eyes, but um, there's it has its own set of colors that you could say, um, kind of like visible light, the light our eyes can see has its own set of colors. So yeah. the analogy would be that like um, Hubble can see you know, a, a little bit into one of those colors, but Webb can see many of those colors. So maybe Hubble can only see like the equivalent of green, whereas Webb would be able to see the red, orange, yellow, green, and blue, um, you know, and, and then uh, maybe a, a few others. But um, the reason for this is because um, so, some of the science goals are, to, for example, see some of the very first stars that ever existed in our universe. So our universe um, is about 13.7 billion years old. Uh, The first stars would have formed um, a a few hundred million years after the birth of our universe. So they're going to be, you know, really, really far away from us. And it takes an incredibly long time for that light. And let me ask you this. When you say universe, I'm just wondering, are are you talking about just our specific, the Milky Way, the, as they call it, uh, what do you do? What is the scope of the, our universe? So the scope of our universe is what we call the observable universe. If we were to, uh, you know, uh, like with Hubble, if we were to just point the telescope um, at a spot in the sky and just turn the camera on and expose for days at a time to get the faintest objects that we could see, um, we're going to eventually reach a limit. Mm -hmm. Um, And that limit is dictated by the fact that the universe has a, a finite age and that light has a finite speed. So um, light uh, emitted from the very first stars near the the birth of the universe has had about 13.1 billion years to travel across our universe, which includes our Milky Way and many, many other galaxies. So um, we can't see past uh, 13 point, you know, let's say about 13.7 billion light years because light just wouldn't have had enough time to be able to get from those farther places in oh, our universe. Okay, this but stuff. this stuff, it just, it just makes your head spin in a way. But I guess what you're saying yeah, then yeah. is the idea of Webb being able to, you know, perhaps allow us to observe what were some of the original stars in our universe means we're going to be seeing light from those stars of stars that no longer exist. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, they they so, blew up. They've been destroyed. They fell in a black hole. Who knows? But that light's been traveling for billions of years, and we're finally just now seeing this light. But the actual origin of it is now probably not there anymore. Very likely so. Um, so uh, the early universe should have had a lot of big stars, you know, producing a lot of light. But the bigger a star is, even though it has more mass and more fuel to create that light, the shorter its lifetime is. So the most massive stars may only live, uh, you know, upwards of a a couple million years. Our sun, uh, by comparison, uh, will live a total of about 10 billion years. 
And then there are the really tiny faint stars, which go through their fuel very, very slowly, despite the fact they have a small amount of fuel. And they can live theoretically upwards of a trillion years. Wow. So some of those very cool stars that formed uh, in the universe, the, the small stars, would still be alive today. Being able to see them, though, is a, a little bit different story because those would just be too faint for us to be able to, to really see. But, yeah, we, we'll be able to see the light from those, those really big stars that would have died um, uh, very early in the, in the universe. And they, a lot of them would have exploded uh, in a supernova when they, when they ended their lives. And the other thing about this is that as that light is traveling across the universe and the universe uh, is expanding, that light is actually getting stretched. So the visible light that these stars gave off, the light our eyes would be able to see, has been stretched into the infrared. And so that's why a telescope like Hubble is not going to really be able to see those very first stars because the light is mostly in the infrared. And so Webb is uh, specifically designed to be able to, um, to detect very faint objects in infrared and be able to see into that type of light to detect uh, those very first stars. All right, listen, um, another... we're, we're going to hang on that thought. We're gonna, we got to take yeah. a break. We got to take a break. And yeah. uh, when we come back, I'll let you pick up that thought where we left off. Also, um, while we're in break, I want you to dig around there and get ready. When we come back, I want to see some images right off the bat. Some of them that really rocked your world. And let's show people, and maybe even too, if you get a chance, let's maybe give a little comparison. Maybe show a little of the Hubble compared to what you see with the web so people can see the distinction and then we can take some phone calls for you and uh, there's a lot of areas we can go on on this. I just find it fascinating. So stay where you yeah. are, Billy. We'll be right back, continue our conversation right yeah. after this.